Craig here, uh, up in our Egan, Minnesota Manufacturing Distribution Center. Say, we're going to do a video today on a piece of equipment for stretching screens. This is the RSP200. It's a manual stretcher, um, so it doesn't require a compressor, no cylinders. Um, it works easily, it works rapidly, um, and it's going to give you a really accurate tension on the screen when you're doing this. So we're going to be doing a 20 by 24 inch aluminum frame and um, this, this apparatus will actually do 2024 up to a 2331. So what I'm going to do is um, we're going to bring it into a tighter shot so that you can see how we have it set up, uh, the different parts of it, and then we'll actually stretch a screen and, uh, and glue it okay, down. Okay, so let me show you the parts of this uh, particular stretcher. And again, this is the RSP200, which is a manual uh, stretcher. Okay. So we have four individual stretching devices here and th this is a bar stretcher. So we have um, our cranks for moving our bar. We have the locking bar and these just slide in um, onto the surface. Uh, we have a bolt in here and this is because the frame sits in this area and when you're, ten when you're tensioning it you can get a lot of pressure and if the fabric would happen to tear, rip, snap, you don't want to have the flame, the frame go flying all over the place. So what happens is that if it does, it s smacks into this and just drops. So you don't have to be concerned about getting um, harmed with this. So again, we have our four clamps, one for each of the sides. So we're going to be stretching in all directions. Um, we have a bar that will do up to a thir uh, 31 and a, t and a 23. So again. 2331s or smaller. Um, and so what you do is you just offset the bars to one side. So we have our aluminum frame which has been ground and then what I like to do is come back and put a layer of instant adhesive on the surface which is what we're going to be using to bond the mesh. And you let that cure completely which is a matter of minutes because you can spray it, or seconds I should say. And uh, what you're doing then is you have a really good bond area and you're going to be bonding glue to glue, which is going to give you a superior bond. So we are going to take our mesh and we're going to be utilizing a 125 mesh count today. And so we're going to just get it in position. Go. And um, we're going to be utilizing a flexible locking bar. This particular bar is flexible, as you can see. Um, has a couple strips on the bottom which help hold the mesh in place. Um, and I'll show you what's so neat about having a flexible bar in a moment. So we're going to adjust that back. There we go. So I simply push it down in and lock it back. At that point, I go to the opposite side and we repeat the process. Now what I do is I draw a little bit back like this and then I lock it in place. Go to the third side, repeat the procedure. And you'll notice that obviously these bars are longer than what we need for this frame, but again this is why we can do our 20 three by thirty ones. Okay, so we're all locked in. At this particular point, we're going to start drawing the tension onto our mesh. So I'm going to turn these in a clock word motion, get a little tension going this direction, and I'm going to go over to the opposite side and do exactly the same thing. And you can see that we're already getting a little bit of tension, but now we need to draw out in this direction. And we continue the process. So we do one, two, three, four.
Okay, we now have some tension on it, it's still too light. So at this particular point, we're going to be um, taking consideration of our corners because it's going to be a harder or more tension right here in the corner as we're working. Uh, so I want to be able to soften that up a little bit. This is where that flexibility comes in. So if you'll see, I can simply push down on it like this, and now I'm getting a little bit of tension release here. So I want to make sure I don't over tighten the corners because what's going to happen is if I continue on, I'm going to end up splitting the mesh in this area. So let's check out the other side. Now we'll soften this one a little bit. And that one's okay. So at this point, I'm going to do a little more tensioning. Keep checking my corners. And I always like to go just opposite sides. And let's do our fourth side. That's pretty taut. But <clears throat> let's take a reading with our meter. And I'm going to give this just a little bit more. Corners are okay. Okay, so let's take another reading. Excellent. I'm doing about 25 newtons, which is where I want to have it. Okay. So, at this point, we've stretched our frame. Now, some people, depending on the mesh that you're using, are going to want to let it sit for a little bit, come back and restretch it. I find with this particular mesh that we're utilizing that we don't need to do that. So what we're going to use is Rhino Bond, which is a instant adhesive. This is the RBT series, so it's a Rhino Bond Toughen. We make a professional series, an economy series, the Toughen series, and then there's also some specialty type items. Um, let's get the okay, you're going to want to continue to do this on all sides. Spread it around, make sure that you have good contact with everything. And again, repeat it down all four sides. We're going to give it a spray all the way around. And you don't want to overspray. It's more kind of a mist over the whole thing. If you overspray it, sometimes it'll get to a chalky white, which is over curing it, and it'll become a weak bond. And again, that's the RBP 1500A frame adhesive. Okay. So once that's dry, we back off our pressure, and at that point we simply cut out the frame and we're ready to go. Now one of the things that people have asked about as well is that, well what happens if I get a drip somewhere in this area? Well there actually is a product, it's called ARP2000, and that's a debonder. So number one, if I glue myself to something, I can get unglued. But secondly, I can take it, put it on a couple of pieces of t-shirt, and from both sides scrub it, and it'll then take it out of the screen. I'm not going to worry about this one here because it's well, it's not in my image area at all, because you're going to keep the squeegee a few inches away from the edge all the way around. That's how simple this is. So we back it off because it is the tension down. There we go. And then we're simply going to take a knife and trim it out. Okay. So
go. We have our frame. It's that simple to do. So if you want to do all your frames, or if you simply want to use this for utilizing, um, doing restretching, it's a great way to go. Okay, this is how simple. Here it is. At that point, simply slide your locking bars out, get rid of your excess mesh, and move on to the next, the next frame. Pretty straightforward, easy to do, um, doesn't take up a lot of space. Generally, I would suggest that it's just set up on a table and leave it where it is so that every time you need to do one or two or five or 10 or 15 screens, you got it done. The RSP 200 manual stretcher, 2331s, 2024s, you can actually do even a little bit smaller. No compressor required, no electric required. Manual process, but very, very fast. And we also utilize the Rhinobond Instant Frame Adhesive, the R RBT300, Rhinobond Toughened, along with the 1500A activator. Thanks for watching. Until the next time.